two beef burgers in front of you. One represents everything that is wrong with nutrition in the modern world. The other is a prime example of high integrity whole foods with a fantastic nutritional profile. My job today is to explain why. My journey with food is that I was fortunate enough to grow up in a family where we enjoy great food. And we'd often gather together at key celebrations like Christmas and Easter and feast. My mum is an amazing cook. My grandmother was a fantastic cook. And as I grew into a young man, I also developed my own passion for cooking and loved and still do expressing myself creatively through food. But food was never had anything to do with nutrition for me. It was always about fun, it was about celebration, it was about hanging out with friends and with a healthy or unhealthy amount of debauchery also. In my late 20s, I got gut sick. And Western medicine couldn't really define what it was exactly that it was wrong with me. And to be fair, my issues weren't extreme enough to warrant a huge amount of attention. But for me, they were pretty serious. I'd been healthy all my life. And all of a sudden, I found myself with lethargy, with foggy headed headedness. I'd react to certain foods. My body was sore. My feet were sore. I'd have bouts of eczema. And eczema on the eyelids is not a pleasant experience. For any self-respecting Englishman, toilet humor is a key part of our comic repertoire. But for me, after two years of not having actually done a satisfying poo, <laughs> this really wasn't anything to laugh about. So I started exploring what a good diet actually was and how through my cooking and food I could heal my digestive system. And what I soon realized out there in the mainstream that there was a whole world of confusing information and this information was often contradictory and didn't seem to make much common sense to me. I finally uncovered the Whole Foods movement and within the philosophy of Whole Foods, there was an elegant formula of understanding of how the modern world had come to this position of having confused and quite difficult nutritional aspects. It also had an understanding of how I'd probably had started to have problems, my diet had become challenged. And it also gave me an understanding of how I could recover my digestive system. So I started exploring Whole Foods, and I'd go to Whole Foods stores and Whole Foods cafes and see what kind of foods were around. I remember one day looking down at my plate, and I saw a brown rice ball. And I thought, hang on a second, this is completely wrong. The brown rice ball was under-seasoned, undercooked, and there was no dipping sauce, there was no fun there whatsoever. It was completely boring. No celebration of life. And what sparked in my mind, and I've been exploring ever since, is this idea that I feel that we have in the Western world, that we need to deny ourselves pleasure in order to be healthy. And I've pondered that for a while. And for me, this sort of semi-cult of denial is symptomatic of a deeper issue we have with our food in the Western world. And the way that I see it is we are both individually and culturally quite disconnected from our food. But this isn't surprising, really, if you consider our evolution over the last couple of hundred years and how we've changed to produce and relate to food. It's no wonder. The process of industrialization and our move to urban centers separated us emotionally from the land. Then we've had various waves of nutritional science and food education that has taught us to deny our, some of our favorite tastes and instincts in terms of our flavors for like salt, fat, or sugar. And this has cut our body and mind connection. Then if you add into this mix food manufacturing that often counterbalances the things like the fats, salts, and sugars, so we can't taste the true levels of what we have in our food and with our additives and flavorings also, then we don't trust our taste. And then we have modern media giving us a distorted sense of body image. 
And then just the, the busyness of modern life, we are constantly distracted, often barely able to focus in, in, in the present moment. So yoga and a lot of the Eastern traditions focus on unifying the human experience, the body, heart, and mind, by focusing on a physical experience in the present moment. So what I'd like to do today is talk you through a food awareness practice that can help you begin to develop your own deeper connection with food and start to direct you towards a nutritional guidance system of your very own. I'm sure as we are on the lead up to lunch, you won't mind if I skip straight to cake. <laughs> the desire to eat is normally triggered by a few different things. A physical need such as hunger is one. Reaction to an emotional stimulus is another. So a you're angry with your boss, you've had an argument with your partner, you want to celebrate, you're happy. Or the trigger might be mindless from the perspective of being a habit or an addiction. Whatever it is, just have awareness of it. Be conscious of it. Don't judge it. Then when you go to the actual act of eating, give the food the respect it deserves. Allow your senses to take it in. The simple act of smelling your food being aware that you're about to eat will allow the body to prepare for digestion, saliva will be produced, the stomach will relax. And then when you go to the actual act of eating, focus on what's happening in your mouth. Notice as the flavors and the textures develop. And notice if you find that's different from thinking about the future of what's happened in the morning. And when the desire to naturally swallow arises, follow that. In the minutes, hours, and into the next day after you've finished eating, notice how you feel. Were you satisfied? Were you full but still hungry? Do you feel happy? Do you feel angry? Have you had a physical reaction? Just have awareness of it again. So by bringing awareness into all three areas, the trigger, the actual act of eating, and how you feel afterwards, you will begin to take your food experience into more of a sort of total a total experience. And by doing that, over time, you will uncover your own inner nutritional guidance system, your own inner, inner compass that will guide you towards better nutrition. But in order to fully recal recalibrate that inner guidance system, it's great to base that awareness practice by following some key Whole Foods principles. So the Whole Foods movement I talked about earlier is all based on the research of a dentist called Dr. Weston Price, who was practicing in 1930s America. What he noticed was that the dental health of his patients, and in particular the children, was deteriorating rapidly. And he also saw that society around him didn't seem to be very healthy. This was a unique turning point in the history of the world, when, a turning point between the old world and the new. And there were still pockets of the world that were as yet untouched by modern civilization. And what Western Price saw was that pictures coming in from around the globe of so-called primitive people who seemed to show that they had fantastic straight teeth, a wide dental arch, and strong physical form. So he decided to set off around the globe and seek out these isolated communities who were renowned for having great health, and he wanted to analyze their teeth, their physical form, and their diets. And this is what he did. He spent 10 years crisscrossing the globe. What he found was that traditional communities who had stayed true to their dietary roots did, in fact, display great health, with tiny percentages of dental cavities, tiny percentages of dental arch deformities. So that's crowding of the upper teeth that is so prevalent in the modern world. And they showed impressive resistance to disease generation after generation. What he also saw was as soon as those communities adopted the foods of modern commerce, and what he was talking about by that was refined sugars, refined flours, refined vegetable oil, pasteurized milk, canned goods. As soon as those foods were adopted, 
things changed. The adult population would have dental cavities quite quickly, and the first generation of children born of the adults eating the modern diet would display a heightened percentages, dramatically heightened percentages of dental arch deformity, with reduced general health of the community. So, even though all these different populations that Western Price studied had very varied diets, they all followed some key underlying principles and food preparation techniques. And pretty much the whole of the, the whole foods movement's understanding can be whittled down into two key concepts: that of nutrient density, whereby food is richly, uh, richly nutritious relative to other foods, and that those nutrients are bioavailable, so easily available for the body to assimilate and digest. And we're going to go through those principles whilst looking at our our beef burgers. So, none of the traditional cultures that Western Price studied would refine their foods in a way of taking nutrition out of the food they eat. In our modern beef burger, just in the bun, we have refined salt, refined sugar, and refined flour. Whereas we have a beautiful spelt whole meal for our. Whole Foods burger. None of the traditional communities would have foods that have been denatured, and by denatured, I'm talking about their underlying chemical structure being changed by the processing of their food, so it's more difficult to digest. The mayo in our modern burger is made with a powdered egg and a refined vegetable oil that would have been denatured in the processing, whereas our Whole Foods burger has got a raw egg aioli from with raw garlic. A live side of vinegar, cold-pressed olive oil, and sunflower oil, and the egg would have been laid by a chicken roaming on pasture, eating bugs and worms with a fantastic nutritional profile. This is a superfood source. You can have as much as you want of it. All of the traditional cultures studied ate animal products in abundance, and they championed the fats. They ate the whole animal, nose to tail, all the organ meats. And without fail, they made long, slow-cooked bone broths, which are rich in gelatin, which is fantastic for the digestive system, like a jelly stock, and rich in minerals. In the modern world, we have stock cubes. Our modern burgers made with a lean beef mince made from a lot, lot raised animal, probably has antibiotics in it. Our Whole Foods burger has got a beautiful pasture-raised. Meat in it, rich in fat. It's dark. It's nutritious. Fantastic nutritional profile. Prior to the advent of pasteurisation, refrigeration, every culture around the world would preserve their food by culturing, culturing and fermenting all their fruits, vegetables, meats, fish, milk, cheeses through a bacterial fermentation. We all carry one to two kilos of bacteria in our digestive system, and the balance of that bacteria is essential for our general well-being, for our immune system, for how well we digest and assimilate our food, for how well we detoxify our bodies, and for how well our、um, mind space works. In the modern world, we pickle our foods with sugar and vinegar. With our whole foods pickle, sauerkraut, and cucumber, it's gone through a bacterial fermentation, which has produced positive acids for digestion. It's produced digestive enzymes that will also help. The vitamin C content of the original cabbage has been increased 300 percent. This is classic whole foods. It will help digest the, the fat in the meat. Classic whole foods. Increase nutrients, increasing your ability to digest the food. And often our sauces, like tomato sauce and mustard, would also be fermented that way. We used to have raw cheeses made from unpasteurized dairy, rich in good bacteria, 
and that bacteria helps you break down, helps break down the cheese before you eat it, so it's semi-pre-digested. Helps you deal with the, the lactose and the casein. All the traditional cultures studied that had access to nuts, grains, seeds, and legumes would either soak, sprout, or ferment them. And this would deactivate the natural protection mechanism of the nuts and seeds, which has phytic acid and digestive enzyme inhibitors in them. And by simply by soaking or sprouting a nut or seed, like soaking your porridge overnight, you, you neutralize these negative elements, and you produce, again, positive enzymes for digestion. It increases the B vitamin content of the food. And when we're going to talk about bread today, the traditional sourdough fermentation of bread, where the bread would be allowed to rise overnight, helps to break down and soften the gluten in the bread, so it's more easily digestible. Whereas a modern bread is often taken from raw ingredients to the finished bread in under two hours, which means the gluten is still very hard. And this is one of the key reasons we have so much gluten intolerance in the modern world. All the traditional cultures studied had some form of sacred food that they reserved for women of childbearing age and young children. This is like something like a fish egg, fish heads, liver, nutrient-rich foods. And these are often the foods that in the modern day we tell our pregnant women not to eat because we've lost faith in our food chain. So these ingredients have been set up to demonstrate quite a stark difference between the two. And I imagine you might be asking, what are the relative costs? Well, on face value, these foods over here are much more expensive than these ones over here. But if you were to incorporate the true costs of these foods in terms of reduced quality of life, your reduced life expectancy, and the true social costs, when at current rates we're projected to have 80% of adults and 33% of children being obese in Australia or overweight by 2025. The true cost of these products far outweigh those. Now, the good news is all of these taste better, they feel better, they're more respectful to you and the land that produced their growth. You have the power to redirect your own personal nutritional destiny. So with awareness, go out and explore your whole foods heritage that is in behind all of our cultures. And if that feels good and tastes good, share that with your friends, share that with your family, and together we can change the course of the Western world's food history. And on that note, let's eat lunch. Thank you.